All right, music fans and uh, fans of other stuff too. Welcome Harmless Dave here talking about real music in real time for a couple of real people. Yes, a few, just like you, just like me. Awesome interview with Stephanie Calvert. Not because of anything I said or did, but because Stephanie Calvert was absolutely amazing. <laughs> that had to be the best conversation or one of the best conversations I've ever had with uh, either a human being or a rock star. <laughs> or both. You know what I'm saying? Just anybody who's not a rock star. I mean, I've had some great conversations with truck drivers, believe it or not. Um, but I haven't aired any of those here. Maybe I should. Um, truck drivers are probably some of the smartest people on the planet, even though uh, whatever, the media can do whatever they want to. And truck drivers, they don't have to deliver the stuff. <laughs> so um, here's the thing that I think was really solidified in that interview with um, Stephanie Calvert, that there are people who have power, whether it's a corporation, whether it's a rock band, whether it's in government, there are people with power that do not like you, especially if you don't share their worldview. Uh, if you think, for instance, that, and I, I can't speak for Stephanie, but here's the thing. If you think that gas at $1.92 a gallon is better than gas at three thirty-eight a gallon, right? If you think that, then you know maybe you're part of the problem, according to these people. If you think, for instance, that kids in school shouldn't be taught to hate each other at a really young age, best in how much melanin is in their skin, if you think that that's really a bad idea, then again, according to these people, you might be the big problem. If you feel the right to defend yourself in your own home is important because, you know, they're defunding police departments all across the country, um, then again, you might be part of the problem, according to these people. Look, Stephanie and I, Stephanie and I had a conversation um, after, and it was enlightening because basically it, it boils down to this. Um, there's a good chance they just didn't like her politics. Like it wasn't just about doing the thing, although that plays into it because notice all of the blue places, they want you to go and run and do the thing. Some of the red places do too. Those are the people that aren't really red. They're just kind of like going along and they fundraise off of the other side and then they don't get anything accomplished. But there are a few places like Florida and Texas that are actually trying to keep their citizens free, right? But you'll notice that this has become political rather than medical. And that's crazy. I mean, why don't people just follow what works rather than saying, oh, well, that guy from last year had this idea where he told you to take the, the horse paste or whatever. Well, if that works, we're screwed because then he's going to get credit for that. And see, I'm not even the biggest fan of his. I think, yeah, I prefer the dollar uh, 92 a gallon gas. So in that respect, yeah, um, what is it? Once a day and twice on Sunday, I would take the other guy back. Oh, yeah, 100%. Now, there's a lesson to be learned, though, from you know what happened in the state of Virginia, is that I think if you go in there and you're not bombastic, but you're firm, and you're articulate, and you come off as somebody with authority on a multitude of topics, and you can debate, and you're not just using insults to debate, you're just using uh, logic and maybe some strong language, but say, hey, I know there's some people that love the last guy, right, because of those things, because he wasn't a slick politician. I'm just saying that Suburban women came out in droves because they wanted their kids to be protected. And this guy basically said that I will protect your kids, that your kids will not be, you know, force thinged. OK, they won't they won't be mandated to do that. Um, they don't have to wear medical devices for seven or eight hours a day. And they don't have to learn about, you know, how. This, this kid next to them is a bad person because he was born with more or less melanin in their skin. The other issue might be, too, that 
There are a whole bunch of books in these schools that are sick, twisted, and perverted, and that need to be removed. That it, and it's it's gotten down to the point now where people are starting to come out, and they're using language to describe what's happening. I think an appropriate word might be grooming for these little kids. And um, I don't care what you are on the political spectrum. There, I saw a group of very liberal feminist women, right, who were outraged that their kids were being treated this way and that they would run to vote for someone who allowed their kid to breathe all day. Because the risk, and this is the sad part, they're rolling out the 5 to 11-year-old stuff now. They're rolling it out, and it's. I think that's going to fall flat on its face. I do think there will be people who um, are lemmings and who've been brainwashed for 18, 19 months now that they have to do this to keep everybody safe, right? Everybody needs to be safe. Yeah, and we'll see what happens with that. God help us, right? So um, Stephanie Calvert is just fantastic. And the reason I'm doing kind of like a follow-up wrap-up is because her interview was really important because it exposes the music industry as just being another arm of this political machine. And do I think these people communicate with one another? I don't know. Maybe some of them do, but I think it's more just this common knowledge that everybody knows that you're supposed to behave this way because you're this person in this rock band at this time who is raised a certain way. And no matter how many good ideas the other side has, or just not even just the other side, but just people in general, because you're starting to see the country unite around the idea that evil needs to be destroyed. That's, that's what this is about. You, people are uniting. They may not agree politically on many of these pet peeve wedge issues that have separated humanity for decades and that have been purposely used to distract us from the larger takeover of the system that is now occurring. But people are waking up and saying, oh, I need to put down my pet peeve issue here because we're losing our ability to do free speech. We're losing our ability to uh, parent our children. We're losing our ability to decide medically what happens to our own bodies. In the case of Stephanie Calvert, that was very, very clear that her issue had to deal with everything that's happening out there. That's why her story was so compelling to me. I'm like, really? Because this is the stuff I've been talking about. And now here's a real life, real world example And somebody who couldn't be more like sweet and real, but also very firm and very bold in their convictions. Just that's what we need. And the women, by the way, are leading the way. The mama bears are the ones being listened to, because guess what? If you're (laughs) if you're going to go full bore on the ladies, eventually you're going to be accused of being anti-woman. And if you do that enough times, you're going to look like a charred piece of human flesh when it's all over, because the ladies don't put up with this crap. The men tend to, you know, support their ladies and and we're out there trying to be leaders. But I tell you what, when you rile up the women in the culture, things really start to happen because who runs the household for the most part? Not just, you know, traditionally, because I know that sounds patriarchal. But who runs the household? The ladies do. They do. And the men are there to support the ladies' decisions when it comes to the household. Um, My parents, the way they did things is my dad went out and worked and made money. And uh, my mom, she ran the house. And I'm talking about finances. I'm talking about things that needed to be fixed, things that needed to be um, improved upon. Of course, the children. All of that, I mean, that's a big enterprise. It's made fun of today, but that's, I mean, that's where women get their leadership skills to some degree. And then when the women go out in the workforce, they're typically movers and shakers. And 
to me, Stephanie Calvert might have been the de facto leader of Starship behind the scenes. I mean, being that good example of being uh, fan friendly, like going out, hanging out with fans and being real and knowing that this was a great opportunity that she had. And I think she tried to make the most of it. So I'm sure there's two sides to every story, right? There's two sides to this and they'll tell their side or they won't say anything. Most likely they're not going to say anything because what can they say? We got rid of her because she didn't align with our politics and she refused to do the thing the way we wanted her to do it. And her reluctance puts everyone at risk and everyone in danger. Sure, sure. Uh, tell that to the people over at Kiss Incorporated right now, because none of what they did had any uh, good results. And they don't have a guitar tech anymore. And that's a super sad thing. And I believe some of these things can be prevented. They can be. People just aren't listening. And they're so politically dug in that they won't listen to you. They just, and it's a life or death thing right now, and they still won't listen to you. I mean, what threshold of death do we need to hit in order for people to start to listen? That's a really good question. And it shows too right now that um, human life is devalued and people in general are dehumanized and othered. I mean, how can you be friends with someone for 15 years and just kick them to the curb and not give them a decent, honest explanation as to why? I think that's an important question. And one, I'm sure they're not going to answer, but at the end of it all, we have ourselves to blame because if we don't pick up the pace here and do the Virginia thing, do the Joe Rogan thing, do everything in our power, really, to offset uh, what these people want to do to us, um, we're going to lose. But I think we have a really good chance to win if we stick together.